Welcome to our uh, ROL YouTube channel. Thank you for joining us this morning. Amen. Before you jump into the service, I want to let you know some things that are coming up. Uh, the first of which, our youth, our ROL Connected dot youth. You can find us on Instagram. We're still meeting every Thursday, 7 p.m. It's alive. We have awesome, awesome uh, guest speakers that bring the word every Thursday. Uh, please join us for that. Um, we also meet on Saturdays for prayer at 10 a.m. Um, please join in on that as well. And then every other Tuesday, we have Linked Up Tuesday. Amen. And it's just a great time to just to socialize, to connect, to have fun, and have games. So for youth, or you have a youth in the house, or a young adult, we'd love for you to join in on that. Amen. Uh, next is kids are cool. Our kids are being blessed, and we as teachers are being blessed. Um, going ahead and putting on lessons there. If you haven't done so already, you could just click down below on the playlist area. And you could go ahead and click on previous Sunday schools and upcoming ones that are to be posted every Sunday at 11 a.m. Amen. We also have My Savior and I Women. It's an awesome opportunity to get together with other women. Um, it is a women's ministry and it is filled with just worship, word, and prayer. And so if that's really what you're needing right now, we'd love for you to join in. If you haven't done so already, just let us know down below on comments. You could get... Uh, uh, connected with our pastor or um, you could go ahead and just let us know on any of the platforms we'd love to get that information with, to you they meet every other friday amen that's my savior and i um ladies also we're very excited on our, our turnouts for the last two months for our women's discipleship and we want to just keep on going amen so mark your calendars august 15th and this time we're going to start at 10 a.m because we just love the coffee and fellowship so much we're extending it why not so we're going to go ahead and meet August 15th at 10 a.m. Um, for our women's discipleship. Men, don't feel left out. You're also going to get your men's discipleship again. Amen. It's going to be the 29th at 10 a.m. So both events, 10 a.m. Um, please make sure you join in. It's an awesome opportunity for both the men and the women to be fed. Just encourage one another, lift one another, see each other through the Zoom. Um, it's just an awesome opportunity. Amen. So we pray blessings. We pray that you just jump on into any and all things that apply to you. Feel free to contact us and uh, be blessed. Saints, it is time to bless the Lord. Thank you for partnering us again with another month. Amen. Um, we just thank you for just partnering, being in line with this vision, this ministry, um, not only blessing those that are already congregants, but those that have been added on through this time. We just want to thank you so much for your generosity. Uh, there are three ways to give. Amen. The first of which is cash app. You could go ahead and send that through ROLCCSGB. Then we have Venmo. Uh, you could go ahead and type in River of Life Christian Church. And last we have Zell, and you could go ahead and put ROLCCSGV at yahoo.com. Whichever way you give, even if it's by mail, we just want to thank you for sowing a seed. We want to thank you for partnering with us and just believing that God is doing a mighty, mighty work through this ministry. Good morning, church. It's a blessing to be able to be with you this morning on this beautiful, beautiful Sunday morning. I just want to take this opportunity to welcome you all and thank you for uh, being a part of our service today. Um, as you know, we, we usually like to send out some greetings at the beginning of our service, and um, there's a few things that I need to make mention of. First of all, uh, we send our condolences to a, a few families that are out there. Um, I'd like to send our condolences to the uh, Terrazas family. Uh, they are uh, very, very good friends. In fact, like family to us. Uh, their uh, uh, son, brother, uh, Reuben, passed away uh, this last week. And uh, the wonderful thing is that he uh, was a Christian and he is rejoicing in the presence of the Lord. So we send our condolences to the Terrazas family. Uh, also to uh, the Barrios family. Uh, I have the privilege of being able to uh, minister at not just my church, but also uh, Greenwood Community Church. And we lost a dear sister in the Lord, uh, Sister Gloria Barrios. And I just want to take this opportunity to tell the Barrios family how uh, they are in our thoughts and our prayers. Uh, and that uh, we just want you to know that we're right here for you. Also, um, I believe maybe uh, many of you out there might know uh, Pastor Ruben Reyna. Well, uh, this last week, uh, Pastor Reyna lost his uh, wife Stella as well 
as his daughter Joy. Um, we need to continue to lift them up in prayer and ask God to watch over them. Amen. And uh, that the Lord would just see them through this most difficult time. So right now what I want to do is I just want to uh, offer a word of prayer to the Lord and ask that he be with us this morning. Amen. Heavenly Father, we just come before you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Father, how we thank you and we give you all the praise, glory, and honor that you're here with us. Father, we pray for every family member, Father, that we've uh, lifted up to you today, for all the families. Lord, that you would begin to give them peace, comfort, and strength through this most difficult of time. And Father, we pray right now that your spirit would just move in such a beautiful way, Lord God. Father, be with us this morning, Father. Let the word be anointed, God, as we, Father, uh, search scriptures, Father, and get direction from you. I pray today, Father, just uh, that you bless your people, Lord God, and that we, Father, just continue to hold on to your promises, Lord God. Father, with that, we give you all the praise, all the glory and honor in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen and amen. You know, church, I just want to thank you once again for coming on out and being a part of this uh, service that we have. Um, I want to go ahead and jump right into the word because of time and what we want to be able to look at this morning. Uh, we're going to continue on with our series. Actually, this is the fourth message uh, that we are dealing with. And, and the title series is, I am looking up for the coming. And this is going to be the second part of the rapture of the church. And we're going to be in the book of Revelations chapter 4 verses 1 through 5. So I pray that you uh, uh, get your uh, Bible together and your notebooks and pens, whatever it is that you are going to be using for the study today. And I pray that you uh, just be open and receptive to the Word of God this day. Amen. Today what we're going to be really focusing in on is the throne room and the revelation that John receives. Uh, Revelations chapter 4, starting at the first verse. And the Word of God says this, After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Verse number two says, Immediately I was in the Spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a sardis stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Verse number four. Around the throne were 24 thrones. And, those, uh, and on those thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes. And they had crowns of gold on their head. And from the throne proceeded lightning, thundering, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now, church, I begin to look and I think and I read and I, I just try to put myself in John's position as all this is taking place right before his very eyes. And the Word of God speaks of how immediately, immediately he was transformed. It wasn't something that was uh, delayed, but instantaneous. And all these things that are coming to John, uh, this vision, this, this uh, wonderful um, vision that God is giving him, and to be able to see these things, and I, and I put myself in his position, and I think, wow, how awesome that must have been to be able to see that vision firsthand. You know, here we are, we're reading about it, and we get, you know, these pictures, and we uh, have uh, thoughts only, but not truly seeing what it was that John had seen. Now, what I wanted to look at today was this. 
questions that we ask. And one of the questions that I know that many of us are asking is this. Who will be the select multitude of the rapture? Or in other words, who are going to be the ones that will be raptured? Now, I think this is a key that we need to understand. And it's something that scripture speaks of. And the key is this, is that not everyone will be caught up together with the Lord. Now, that's the reason why you and I need to be able to see the time and the day that we live in and to recognize the importance of sharing the word of God, taking the gospel out to whoever it is that we know that doesn't need it. And church, you know, it's not up to us who comes to salvation. Our responsibility is to take the gospel out and give that, uh, that opportunity to people to be able to come to the saving knowledge of Jesus, Jesus Christ. And it's, it's something that we need to hold uh, very near and dear to our hearts. And it's something that we need to be active and, and doing even right now. Now, Revelations chapter 4, verse 4 says this, okay? I wanted to focus on first the um, description and the meaning of some of the things that we're hearing about in our verse today. Verse number 4 says, Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on those thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. See, this speaks of the dead in Christ and those who have been transformed. Okay? Now, you hear that 24 elders, 24 thrones. And I want to give you the, uh, the meaning of this. The elders are representatives of both the Old Testament and the New Testament saints. Okay? The Old Testament saints were represented by the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, we hear throughout the Word of God and we hear through the book of Genesis how the Word describes these 12 tribes of God's chosen people. The first tribe is mentioned in Genesis chapter 29, verse 32. The tribe of Reuben. The second is mentioned in Genesis 29, 33. The tribe of Simeon. Genesis chapter 29, verse 34, mentions the tribe of Levi. That's the third. The fourth is mentioned in Genesis 29, 35, the tribe of Judah. The fifth tribe is mentioned in Genesis chapter 30, verse 6, the tribe of Dan. The sixth tribe is mentioned in Genesis chapter 30, verse 8. And the pronunciation is Naphtal, N-A-P-H-T-A-L-I. I'm having a little trouble pronouncing that. The seventh uh, tribe is mentioned in G uh, Genesis chapter 30, verse 11, the tribe of Gad. The eighth tribe mentioned in Genesis chapter 30, verse 13, the tribe of Asher. The ninth tribe mentioned is in Genesis chapter 30, verse 18, Ishakar. The tenth tribe mentioned in uh, Genesis chapter 30, verse 20, is Zebulun. The eleventh tribe mentioned in Genesis chapter 30, verse 24, is the tribe of Joseph. And the last tribe mentioned is in Genesis chapter 35, verse 18, the tribe of Benjamin. So we see here that there is the, four, uh, the first 12 that are mentioned. Remember, we have to come up with the 24 tri uh, excuse me, uh, uh, altars and thrones. Okay. So now we see that that takes care of the first 12. That is from the Old Testament. Now, the next 12, 
we receive them or understand that this is a representation of the 12 apostles that were discipled by the Lamb of God himself. These are those 12 apostles. Simon called Peter the first. The second, Andrew. The third, James. The fourth, John. The fifth, Philip. The sixth, Thaddeus, the seventh, Bartholomew, the eighth, Thomas, the ninth, James, the tenth, Matthew, the eleventh, Simon, and the twelfth, Judas. They together make up the twenty-four that we see represented in this vision. Revelation chapter 5 verse 5 says this, but one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, has prevailed to open the scrolls and to loosen its seven seals. See, the only one truly worthy was Jesus Christ the perfect sacrifice, the only worthy one, he who has no sin. I could picture John, and John is seeing all this stuff, and he is seeing the, the, the holiness of the Lord, and he is witnessing these thrones and these elders and, and the vision and just the, the, the sense of, 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 of holiness that's up in heaven. And he begins to weep. And the elder who addresses John knew right away. And he begins to speak and he says to him, do not weep. Why? Because Jesus has prevailed the perfect sacrifice, the one that you and I serve, church, Jesus himself. Revelations chapter 5, verse 11 says, Then I looked and I heard the voice of many angels around the throne, the living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000 and thousands and thousands of thousands to witness this. Angels and how they surround the throne. And I think of this number and it just blows my mind away that all of this is in heaven around the throne of God. See, the elders had been transformed from their earthly body into their heavenly body. Why is that? Because this is corruptible. This is uh, dying. It's not perfect. But when we get that, or that transformation begins to take place, we begin to take on the new. Listen to this. The next thing that I wanted to focus in on was this. The elders are clothed in white. See, the, uh, the, uh, the raiment represents the righteousness or the blood of Jesus Christ that makes us white as snow. You see, church, this is sinful. Our mind our thoughts, our words. But when the blood of Jesus Christ comes and forgives us of our sin, something amazing begins to transpire. The sin in our life is blotted out. And we now are worthy through Christ to put on that robe of righteousness, that beautiful white robe that represents the washing away of sin. 
That's what the blood of Jesus Christ does. It makes us white as snow. How wonderful that Jesus will forgive our sinful life, our thoughts, our actions, our deeds. Church, we think about ourselves and we put limitations on forgiveness. But Christ, He looks and He says, I make you white as snow. There's some of you out there today that have such a hard time forgiving yourself for events that have happened in your life, things that you have done, things that you have said, the way you thought, the things you were involved in. But Jesus Christ looks at us and all He sees is His sons and daughters who have been forgiven and now that are washed in the blood of Christ and we are made white as snow. Revelations chapter 19 verse 8 says this, And to he it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteous act of the saints. The church, the bride of Christ, that's who we are. Now listen to this. We see that there is the 24. We see that they are on their thrones. We see that they are uh, with white linen or pure in the eyes of Christ. And now Revelation chapter 4 brings out something even greater, I think. And it says in Revelation chapter 4, And around the throne were the 24 thrones. And, the, and on those thrones, I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes. Here comes the next part. And they had crowns of gold on their head. The crowns that we believers receive. What a wonderful and awesome sight that is. I stop and I picture it. They receive their crowns at the judgment seat of Christ. You see, we've gone from that place of what have you done with the blood of Jesus Christ? And now we are at the place of being rewarded from our Heavenly Father. Now, the Word speaks of five specific crowns and I want to go over those really really quickly because we can get into a whole study on this but I want to be able to show you and bring this out to you the first crown that's mentioned is the crown of life see this is bestowed upon those who have prevailed under trials the crown of life is referred to in James chapter 1 verse 12 and Revelation chapter 2 verse 10. Those who have uh, gone through trials in life but didn't give up, didn't give in. The Bible says that we will be rewarded with the crown of life. The second crown that we read about is the incorruptible crown. See, this is uh, given to those individuals who have demonstrated self-denial or perseverance that just kept us going. That we didn't give in. That we didn't see it and just desire it. But God says those who prevail to self-deny yourself, to not do things that you wanted to do. To not give in to the lies of the enemy. To deny yourself. To pick up your cross. To follow Him daily. There is a reward that we receive when we do that in our life. 
See, the enemy would lie to us and say, why is it worth it? Just do it. Just do it. But Christ says, I will reward you with an incorruptible crown because of self-denial. The third crown that we receive is the crown of righteousness. See, this goes to the, the Christians that desire intimacy with God. And it's promised to those who love and, and anticipate the second coming of Christ. See, the crown of life or the crown of righteousness is, is mentioned in 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 8. The fourth crown that we receive is the crown of glory. This is granted to the Christian clergy who shepherd the flocks, unselfish love that they give, and set an example of Christ in our lives. The crown of glory to ministers, to people that are setting the example, that are feeding the flock. I thank all the men of God that have been ministering on our midweek services that are feeding the flocks. I know that it's difficult of time and studying and so on and so forth, but I will tell you right now, it is so worth it. God sees your labor. God sees your labor for those of you that are, are doing Bible studies and that are there for the people when they call. You Sunday school teachers, those of you that are bringing the Word of God and you are shepherding those young children, it's not something that you do just because. I pray that God bring conviction to our life when there are those of us that know that we're going to be ministering and we just get something and throw it together without seeking the face of God. You Sunday school teachers that are bringing the Word of God to your children, you are held accountable by God. And when you rise to that place of receiving the accountability, God says, you know what? I am going to reward you with this beautiful crown, the crown of glory. Why? Because you are feeding and you are tending to my loved ones, pastors and evangelists that are out there sharing and ministering and being there for the church. I know, I know it takes time, but God honors and will honor your sacrifice. Amen. We could see this in 1 Peter chapter 4, uh, excuse me, 1 Peter 5, 4. And also 1 Peter 5, 2 through 4. We can read about this. The fifth crown is the crown of rejoicing. This is given to people who engage in evangelism, or go after the lost to get them to a place of knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, the crown of rejoicing. Oh friend, how is it when God uses you to minister the word to someone and they come to salvation? There is a crown that is waiting for you, the crown of rejoicing. Oh, friend, don't ever get weary of sharing the gospel. Don't ever get to a place in your life where you think it's not worth it. Because there will be a day that Christ rewards us for all our labor. Grow not weary, but continue to labor for the Lord. For the word of God is very clear when it says, the crowns that we will receive in that day 
and that hour as we stand in the presence of our Lord. Now, church, this is very clear of who, who will be raptured. Look at this. Luke chapter 17, verses 34 through 36. It says this, I tell you, in that night there will be two men in one bed. One will be taken and the other left behind. Two women will be uh, together. The one will be taken and the other left behind. Two men will be in a field. One will be taken and one will be left behind. See, just as the thief comes to steal away, Jesus Christ is coming in that day, in that hour, for His church, for His people, for His bride. It's clear in Luke where it says, one will be taken and one will be left behind. This morning, where do you stand? These are questions that we need to be honest in asking ourselves. The Word of God says this, where Jesus is, we are going to be gathered together. And those who do not, who do not have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ, who accepted Him as Lord and Savior, they will be left behind. The point is this, to sum things up, the rapture is for the believer to be transformed from the corruptible to the incorruptible, from the natural to the supernatural, from the imperfect to the perfect. Some of you now are saying, well, when? When is this supposed to happen? What, what's going on here? Well, church, that's the whole reason for this. The signs of the times, the day that we are living in, the time that no man nor knows. It's a secret moment. The Word of God says this, that John was caught up into heaven suddenly, immediately, he was not expecting this to happen. See, the rapture will happen in this same way. Suddenly, immediately, and unexpected. See, this is an important point that we need to understand. Only God the Father knows the exact time, the exact day, in the exact year of the rapture. Matthew 24, 36 says this, But of that day and hour, no one knows, not even the angels of heaven, but my Father alone. See, we're not waiting for prophetic events to happen anymore, church. It's happened. Things have been spoken of that are happening now. Oh, I'll wait. I'll just continue to wait. Church, we need to be real with ourselves. The coming of Jesus is near. You see, people are not looking for the Lord's return. They aren't. Look at what the Word of God says in Matthew chapter 24, verse 38. For as in the days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying, giving into marriage, until the day that Noah entered the ark. It's the time in the day that we're living in right now. People aren't looking for the return of the Lord. They are engaging in their lives. They are trying to find happiness. 
So many people can't handle this lockdown right now because they say, oh, I got to be out there. I got to be doing. I feel like a prisoner. What a wonderful thing it's given uh, that we are given to be and to focus so greatly on our relationship with God during this time. But are we? Are we thinking about just the entertainment value that I can't even go to the, the show anymore? Or I can't go here or I can't go there and I can't do this. But how about what you can do? How about getting closer with God? This epidemic has just, or pandemic, has just really brought out where people truly are in their hearts. Either you're going to look at it as an opportunity to draw closer to Christ, or you're going to see all the things that you can't do. Church, look up, because Christ is coming soon. Matthew 24, verse 42 says, Watch therefore, for you do not know what hour your Lord is coming. This is talking to Christians, your Lord. What are you doing right now? Think about it, church. Use this opportunity to grow stronger and closer to God, to win those that are lost to Jesus Christ. Matthew 24, verse 44 says, Therefore, you also be ready, prepare, for the Son of Man is coming at an hour you do not expect. Wow. In a moment... In a twinkling of an eye, Corinthians 50, 15, 51 50, uh, and 52 talk about. In an instant. Verse 52 says, in a moment. That word, a minute, a portion, instant, is what this is saying. See, this is, an important fact that you need to understand. See, the rapture is not Jesus coming in great power and glory or his return. What it is, is this. It is him calling for his church before he comes in power and glory. First, the rapture will happen where we will be caught up and taken with the Lord, and then the second, Christ's return, where we, the church, come back with Him. Why? What is the reason for this rapture? Church, this. You and I, those that are saved, born again, sons and daughters of the Most High God, we will sit upon these thrones judging the world, administering His justice. See, if we suffer with Jesus, we will reign with Jesus. See, the motive of the rapture is threefold. The first is the reception. John chapter 14, verses 2 and 3. It says, In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. But I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. The reception to receive back. Our Lord will come and receive his bride unto him. We will see his majesty. His, his majesty is His greatness, splendor. We will glorify His name. Revelations chapter 4 verse 3 talks about purity. Listen to this. Remember John's vision. The jasper that was mentioned is a clear and translucent diamond. This talks about the purity of Christ. God the Father, how He is pure. The jasper mentioned 
is just that. Revelations chapter 21, verse 11, it talks about the, uh, the, the sardine stone. It's a, a red stone in color. And this represents the blood of Christ. See, these two emblems speak of His purity and the blood sacrifice for the church. The second is this, the rescue. Revelations chapter 4 verses 3 and 5 say this, And he who sat there was like jasper and sardis stone in appearance. Now listen to this. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance as or like an emerald. Listen to this in verse number five. And from the throne proceeded lightning and thundering and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now let's look at this. The rainbow. A rainbow encircles the throne. But it's not a rainbow that you and I really think of. A rainbow, it says, is described as the color green or an emerald. Emerald green represents life. I think of your garden and your beautiful places that you have. And when it's healthy, it's green and it's lush. How beautiful is that? There are lightnings and thunders. It's indicating a storm is coming. But what is it that the rainbow means? The rainbow means that the storm has passed. Thunder and lightning come. But recognize the significance of the rainbow. The rainbow comes out after the storm. And how beautiful it is. This is around the throne of God. The rainbow is also, it stands as a covenant that God made with His people. This circle, this rainbow speaks of a never-ending love and eternity with Christ. See, the church is taken out before this great tribulation can happen. And we read this in Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. Verse 10 says this, And to wait for His Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. The third thing is the reunion. Revelations 4.4 4 talks about this. It says in 1 Thessalonians, we're talking about the reunion or being gathered back with Christ, the need for the rapture, the reuniting. Verse uh, 17 says, Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall live forever and be with Him. Church, the wonder the beauty, the majesty. I pray that today you come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Don't be so caught up with this world or in this world that you lose sight on the return of Christ. What John gave us as a vision, you and I, can receive as our eternity to be in this place to receive your crown to receive your white robe to look at you and hear these words from the Lord well done good and faithful servant enter into the joy of the Lord a friend, don't be left behind. 
don't be left. One day, who knows, maybe you'll see this plane and maybe the rapture would have already occurred. But I tell you this, don't wait. Don't say I have an eternity. For the coming of the Lord is soon and very soon. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, just say this simple prayer. Father, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. I surrender my life into your hands. And Lord, from this day forward, I'll serve you and do your will. Father, take me when you rapture your church. Cleanse me of all sin. Father, for I confess you as Lord and Savior of my life. Church, if you said that prayer, I rejoice with you. Send this out to someone that doesn't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Friend, I thank you so much for joining us this morning. I pray that you be blessed and that God's favor rest upon you and your family and that you all stay well and healthy in Jesus' name. God bless you all. Church, thank you so much. We pray that message just blessed your heart. Amen. Once again, we just pray it encouraged you, motivated you, challenged you, inspired you, convicted you, did whatever it is that it needed to do. Amen. Um, before we let you go, we just want to encourage you once again, like every other time, to hit, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, the like button, and the notification button so that you're informed as to when we upload not only our sermons, but also our kids' are cool, uh, Sunday school lessons. Amen. Um, we just want to encourage you to keep connected through us through all the social media platforms that we have, including YouTube down below using comments. You know I love me some praise hands and some praying hands, but we just pray blessings upon you. We thank you so much. We love you. And until we see you guys again, be blessed.